Hey, hey, pretty girl. What's your name? Alpha Rita, but people call me Rita for short. This is my cousin, Dream. Hi, Rita. I'm Peter. Yes, I know who you are. You're the Whalers. Okay, so we were just talking about Peter Tash, Rita, or Alpha Rita Anderson, okay, Bob Marley, and their first meeting. We just did that video yesterday. And so I saw in the comment section, Amuna, you know there's a deleted clip. And I was like, I didn't even know that I was going to get this blessing of this deleted clip today so that we could take a look and break down the very same thing we was talking about. Somebody in the room, in the director's cut room, did not want this clip in. I don't know if they thought it was the odd man out, but they did as much as to shoot this part of the story which means that it is interesting and it is important to the narrative but somebody thought no we should framing it another way and that's what a lot of people are complaining about that the the show the movie was framed in a way that didn't necessarily reflect the truth okay and so as we read yesterday peter walks over to meet rita first the problem with this particular clip is they mashed up the performing in the cemetery, like what Benny Whaler said, and the first meeting, like what Rita said, and they mashed it up and made it one. I mean, according to the text, that would be historically incorrect. According to Rita and Bob, not Bob, Rita and Bunny Whaler, Rita says that she was standing by her house at 18A Greenwich Park Road, her auntie Vi's yard, and that she's seen them walking past the cemetery. Now, to my understanding, this particular cemetery that Rita lived across the street from and the one that Bunny Whaler is talking about is two different ones. Bunny Whaler said the cemetery was Maypen Cemetery, if I'm not mistaken, on that clip in the Marley documentary. But Rita Marley says that this was, I don't even want to misquote her what the name of the cemetery is. So let me, y'all know me already. Let me go ahead and get the proper name of the cemetery that was across the street from her house. Let me see if it's not going to take me too long to get this cemetery name. Boom. So on page 10 of Rita's book, across the street from our house on the opposite side of Greenwich Park Road, the Calvary Cemetery held most of trench town's catholic dead so that particular cemetery was the calvary cemetery not the same cemetery that bunny whaler said that they rehearsed it so whoever did the historical research for this i don't know if they took creative license or what but they decided to make first of all where's bunny in this clip that's <laughs> number one how come there's only two of them you feel me secondly why do they have them meeting in this particular cemetery when it clearly says that they met at her yard i don't know if it was easy for shooting or what but let's continue why are you here singing in the cemetery oh you know i have to find somewhere to rehearse where the fans do come follow us <laughs> is that right the the value in this clip is that Rita and Peter are interacting while Bob Nesta is in the back looking on. You always have, sometimes you'll have a group of men or a group of boys in this case, where one is more vocal and is, he's, he's able to interface with the women easier. And then his brethren who might be a little more shy, who don't like rejection, he kind of will hang back a little bit. And so you see this illustrated in this conversation. And according to Rita, a conversation like this did happen. It just didn't happen in the cemetery. They were leaning up against the cemetery wall, Bunny and Bob. So, and then, and then Rita was across the street at her house. So again, they're asking, why are you rehearsing in here? And then they had them like, you know, sort of fund them, no run with them. Seriously? Seriously? And where's Joe Higgs if this is going to be historically accurate? Isn't he the one that um, had you in the cemetery to be rehearsing? And it's not supposed to be day either because according to Bunny Whaler, it was at night. So there's a few things in this that's not historically connect. I know it would have probably been difficult to be uh it wouldn't have made sense at night because why is she in the cemetery at night? Um, it wouldn't have made sense at night because you really would have been shooting at night in a cemetery with nuppies. So I understand why they changed it a little bit. But then again, mm, I don't know. Let's continue. Well, really, what it is, you know, if you're not afraid for sing for the dopey, then you can sing for any crowd. 
So finally, they have Bob talking, right? This is supposed to be young Bob. And I'm going to keep it a buck. I'm going to keep it a hundred. That would have been weird. Like you over here having a good interaction. And then the, the liquor one in the corner say, yeah, well, if no afraid for sing for dopey. It's like, what? Say what? So I could understand how sometimes people may come off as awkward at first, especially if this is not their forte. And later on, people do. You can see a shyness in him even in interviews or when asked about certain topics. So I think this is kind of to capture the humanity of the person. But once again, um, yeah, I'm not saying it couldn't have happened. I'm just saying her meeting description and this meeting description is not the same. But yeah, Bob, singing for the duppies. Is that why the duppy jumped on Rita in the studio with the puss? Anyway, let's continue. I'm a singer too, you know. I have a group with my cousin. We're called the Solettes. You got a group? Sing me something. Hey. So there goes another part. They took the dialogue, I'm suspecting, either from Rita herself or from Rita's book. But um, yes, they're having a conversation. You got a group. Sing me something. Once again, um, yeah, huh? But again, they have Peter, the one that would have caught her eye because he's the one who's talking to her. Bob looks annoyed in this. Yeah, we are going to stand up here. Come make me go now. Make me do what we are doing now. He looks annoyed in this clip like uh peter what are you doing do we know if peter usually talked up to girls like was this his mo was was he bob the friend just annoyed and ready to go all of these questions but why did they cut it they only made this um interaction between young bob and young Rita very very minimal they cut it very small in the film and i think they should have highlighted it a little more but that's just my thoughts so let's continue we're there for talk i we're there for practice Call myself Robbie. Miss Rita says she can sing. Need to support our fellow musicians. <laughs> Yo, why young Robbie is mad face these and we're there for talk and we're there for practice. <laughs> But they have Peter being kind of like a little bit of girl crazy. Like, yo, bro, stop, stop hating. You know what I'm saying? I'm over here spitting game. Give me a minute. I'll be with you. Go and practice your chords, bread gin. Go and warm up your vice box. Where you bada bada me fa. This is interesting. This would have been an interesting take. Maybe it would have given the audiences a little bit more of what they were looking for. A little bit something to chew on. But somebody somewhere said, cut it. I don't know why, but they did. Why don't you come to see who they want? Tell them the wheel that's sending you. Them give real special treatment for a nice pretty girl like you. Alright, maybe I will. I'll be waiting. See you then. <laughs> Rita the singer. Why them have Peter Tash, Winston, a Chairo, a Peen, a new catty? Why do they have him trying to rope in Rita? Y'all see the little laugh at the end? <laughs> They have him over here being the ladies, the ladies man, okay? The ladies man. Probably they're like, yeah, yeah we're going to have to cut this part. It doesn't really go with the whole one love situation. People are going to begin to ask about Peter Tosh and Rita. I don't think this is a good cut. Ziggy, we're going to have to cut it. Yeah. <laughs> and then at the end, they have this long clip of Rita looking back at Bob, kind of a little bit flirting with her eyes, Bob looking at her, and that's the clip. I guess it's supposed to show how they met and the one love and how it did start from the young love and love was weaking and all of that. Again, this goes in alignment with what we were reading yesterday, and I missed that one. I'm not going to rehash that all here. Go ahead and click the video. I think it's called um, Trouble in Paradise. So you can look at the research that was put forward. What I would say from the article we read yesterday is that Rita, according to her, in a 2005 uh, interview with a German newspaper or magazine, she said for a while she was convinced that she was going to marry Peter. I'll leave that there. Check out that video once again. Shout out to the subscriber who sent me this clip. It was so interesting to watch and it goes exactly with what was being said yesterday. Says something in a something. Something in a something. We don't know what this something is, you know. We just have work with what we've been given. And again, let me know if you think this clip should have been included in the One Love movie. Once more, comment down below, like, subscribe, and share the video. Till next time. 
Island Twist follows Jackie Brown, a young girl who finds herself head over heels for the new island boy at school in fresh outer yard, and Jackie has the fever. But as she navigates the ups and downs of her new crush, things quickly spiral out of control when her not-so-secret admirer becomes determined to sabotage her relationship. So check out the new novel, Island Twist, over on Amazon today. Now back to the story. <laughs>